Going back to testosterone and DHT, what's going to cause those to be low? So first of all, an excess of conversion to estrogen, as we've just discussed, which again, inflammation and stress being the, you know, the primary things that are going to send in that direction. Uh, toxicity as well, but again, toxicity causes inflammation. So we could just simplify to estrogen and stress. Uh, a lack of the nutritional cofactors. So again, talking about uh, zinc and the B vitamins, uh, especially, uh, and magnesium again, all of those would be, uh, you know, super important. And then in terms of DHT, to answer that specific aspect of your question, in that case, it's not just converting to estrogen instead of DHT, although that's a possibility. It's also because people are having a lot of exogenous outside exposure to estrogens, which again will push people more in that direction. And then these days, people are voluntarily taking 5-alpha reductase inhibitors on purpose just to keep their hair. And sometimes for, you know, more serious medical reasons related to the prostate. But again, to me, DHT has a bit of an anabolic effect, so it can lead to a little bit of uh, increase in the size of the prostate. Estrogen has a very anabolic swelling effect and leads to a lot of growth of the prostate. So again, I would look more estrogen for that. Um, but most of it is people just trying not to lose their hair which to me is insane as a, as a value judgment. So to remove the thing that makes you feel confident, assertive, uh, it's also sex, you know, like, like the, the primary thing that gives you your sex drive and ability to perform sexually Yeah, your ability man, to perform, yeah. Is actually yeah. DHT, not testosterone. If people are like, well, if that's true, why does testosterone help? Because your body can and does convert testosterone to DHT, but again, DHT is the primary androgenics, that's masculine qualities, including sexual ability.